Trump wants to force Ukraine to negotiate with Moscow and already has a plan on how to do this. Two key advisers to Donald Trump presented him with a plan to end the war in Ukraine if he wins the presidential election. The plan by Keith Kellogg and Fred Fleets provides that Ukraine will receive more American weapons only if it enters into peace negotiations, writes Reuters. At the same time, the United States will warn Moscow that any refusal to negotiate will lead to increased support for Ukraine, said Keith Kellogg, a retired lieutenant general and one of Trump's national security advisers. According to the plan, during peace negotiations, there will be a ceasefire based on the prevailing clash lines. Fleet said the former president responded positively to the strategy. I'm not saying he agreed with it or with every word, but we were happy with the feedback that we got, he said. However, Trump spokesman Stephen Chung, only statements made by the former president himself or authorized members of his election campaign should be considered official. Journalists say Kellogg and Fleet's strategy is the most detailed plan developed by allies of Trump who has said he could quickly resolve the war in Ukraine if he wins the election. This would mark a dramatic change in the US position on the war. The article states that the main elements of the plan were outlined in a publicly available research paper published by the American First Policy Institute. Kellogg said that if Trump wins the election, it will be critical to quickly bring Russia and Ukraine to the negotiating table. We say to the Ukrainians, you must come to the negotiating table. And if you do not sit down at the negotiating table, support from the United States States will end. And to Russian President Vladimir Putin, you must come to the negotiating table. And if you do not sit down at the negotiating table, then we will give the Ukrainians everything they need to kill you on the battlefield," Kellogg said. According to this research paper, Moscow can also be forced into negotiations by postponing the promise of Ukraine's NATO membership for a long time. Fleets stressed that Ukraine does not need to formally cede territory to Russia according to their plan. However, he said Kyiv was unlikely to be able to regain effective control over all of its territory in the near term. Our concern is that this war has become a war of attrition that will kill an entire generation of young people, he said. According to Kellogg and Fleets, to achieve lasting peace in Ukraine, additional security guarantees for Ukraine are needed. Fleets added that arming Ukraine to the teeth would likely be a key element of this. Trump has repeatedly stated that he will be able to end the Russian war against Ukraine in 24 hours. He said that his opponent in the upcoming election, Joe Biden, should never have promised Ukraine membership in NATO. According to Trump, the large-scale Russian invasion was provoked by Ukraine's intentions to join NATO. Ukrainian sea baby drones of the Ukrainian army installed more than 15 underwater mines near Crimea, thus hitting four Russian warships. These are the corvette Samum, the patrol boat Pavel Derzhavin, a large tugboat and one of two modern mine countermeasures ships. After the first use of naval drones, the Russians built large barriers at the entrance to the port in Sevastopol, which made it almost impossible to carry out drone strikes. Therefore, the team of Ukrainian intelligence head Vasily Malik came up with an alternative option, installing sea mines, says a Wall Street Journal article about the work of naval SBU Sea Baby drones. The so-called bottom mines are made of plastic, weigh about 180 kilograms and are difficult to detect because they sink into the mud of shallow waters. According to Wall Street Journal, the Ukrainian intelligence tracked the routes of naval ships and civilian transport for a month and a half before sending Sea Baby to plant two mines. On September 14, the Sama missile corvette was blown up by one of the mines that made a hole in its stern. As a result, the ship is still in dry dock undergoing repairs. Over the next few weeks, Sea Baby traveled back and forth, covering more than 3,000 nautical miles, laying about 15 more mines, the newspaper writes. For a long time the Russians could not understand what was going on, but after the large patrol boat Pavel Derzhavin pierced the side at the entrance to Sevastopol Bay on October 11, minesweepers and divers combed the area for mines, but apparently found nothing, since October 13, Pavel Derzhavin was redirected to another port for repairs, but when leaving Sevastopol Bay, it again encountered a mine. A large tugboat sent to rescue him also hit a mine, and he himself had to be towed back to port. According to the Wall Street Journal, 
remote mining carried out by SBUC baby drones is the first example of such successful mining in the world.